Hey, amazing creatives. How are you all doing? I'm sorry I've been a bit slow replying to your comments. I've been working pretty hard trying to get some projects in place, but I will reply to all of them soon. But before I tell you what I've been up to, let me introduce this project to you and get it started for you. Okay, so today's video art share is some mini abstract paintings. They only measure just over 14 centimeters square, so that is just about, well, just over 5.5 inches if you work in inches. And I'm taping them down to a board with washi tape, and it will become a lot clearer why I'm doing that at the end. And if you're wondering why I'm pressing the tape on that cloth first, it kind of makes the tape a little less tacky and it's a handy trick that will hopefully mean that I don't tear the paper when I remove the tape later. Now don't forget that I've listed everything that I've used today under the video in the description so you'll find out what paper I'm using and also I've listed the colours as well there. So if you want to know what I'm using just check that out. So there's no sort of plan for this one, well not a detailed one. The idea is that I'm going to build up some paint layers using the same colours on both, but starting with a hot colour base on that left hand piece and a cold colour base on that right hand piece. That's it. That's the plan. I know, bit random. I have no picture in my head of how I want it to turn out. So the addition of the paint layers is pretty much organic and I'm trying my best not to overthink it, but I do have to admit <laughs> that um, not so much with success. I did double guess myself a few times as I went along, but I tried to just turn off the planner inside of me and let what happens happen. I think one of the reasons that I was overthinking this one just a little bit more than usual was because I wanted a piece that I could actually use at the end of the session. And when you're doing something like this with no plan, you're never quite sure how it's going to turn out. Uh, it might take, you know, several sessions to come into being, you just don't know. And I really needed to have this finished by the end of this session. So that's kind of why I'm doing two pieces here, because it kind of doubles my chances of a good outcome. Well, <laughs> unless they both turn out to be a complete bust, that is. But hey, let's not think like that. <laughs> let's just do and enjoy and hopefully something nice will come out at the end. Now I've been really busy working on my film schedule recently and doing some articles as well and I've been thinking a lot about what I want for my art development and for my channel here on YouTube and also what I can provide for you guys that you'll enjoy and find useful. I mean it's all a work in progress but well what in life isn't? And you know, I often find that I spend too much time trying to reach for a perfection that's just frankly unattainable and that's basically holding me back more and more and stopping me from doing things. So I'm trying to embrace imperfection and be brave and get the plans that I have rattling around inside my head that have been just there for too long now and try and get them out. Things like my workshops, products for the shop, and also building a Patreon community as well. So these are my goals for the rest of the year, and you guys can hold me to account in a nice way, of course, hopefully. So things might be rough around the edges as I learn how to do these things and not finish to perfection, but it's better to do than to worry about not being good enough or all those other self-sabotaging things that get in the way, isn't it, don't you think? So that's kind of a quick catch up of where I am at the moment and what I'm kind of planning and, you know, hopefully more of it will become a lot clearer as I launch things and you'll see more. So if my videos are a little rougher than usual or I don't comment quite as quickly and reply, I always try and reply quickly to questions, but sometimes I do miss them sometimes. Please do be patient with me and that's basically why. Because <laughs> I appreciate absolutely every comment, every like, everything you guys do. It means a lot to me. And my main aim is to help you be more creative and inspire you, give you tips and tricks and, you know, learning points that I've found that I think might be useful to you too. And I'm just trying to find the best way that I can do this. Anyway, that's just a bit of some stuff that was on my mind recently. <laughs>
I did all a layering of this acrylic paint in one session and I might have used a heat tool to assist the paint layers to dry, um, particularly where the, the paint was thicker, just for speed, not for anything else. All I needed it was to be touch dry so that I can then add the next layer. And, and as I'd put the layers on quite thinly, it didn't need a lot. It dried quite quickly. But I didn't want the acrylic paint to dry on the tape, so I took the tape off very carefully so as not to tear the paper. And I did this as soon as I had finished that last layer. Now it probably wouldn't have been a problem as my layers are quite thin, but you do run the risk of sticking that tape permanently to your project with acrylic paint. So unlike with watercolour paint where you would leave the whole thing to dry before you took the tape off, with the acrylic paint you kind of want to remove that tape as soon as you can. Now I'm looking at these two pieces and I feel like that right hand one, well, I, it's not quite finished for me yet. So I just think it needs a little bit more work. And now you can see why I use the tape. I wanted that white border as I'm going to use these mini pieces to make some cards with. And I think that the border just adds a great look to the finished piece. Now you don't have to do the border at all. It's not like, you know, totally necessary, but I just really like the way it looks. And I think it works particularly well on these craft card blanks that I'm using because it gives you a nice edge between that craft colour and then the paint colour. But hey, you know, maybe that's just me. You might have other thoughts on it. To stick the pieces to the card blanks, I used a thin layer of gel medium. You don't need it to be very thick at all. And then I placed the cards under some heavy books to keep them flat. You may still get some curling and warping of the cards, but hopefully it will be down to a minimum. Now I normally do my cards with the fold at the top because this position works out best for photography and as most of the cards I make these days are actually just for show and for photographing rather than use. That's why I'll put my fold at the top but these particular ones I actually want to use them as cards. I know, novel right? <laughs> So I'm putting the fold on that left hand side so that hopefully they'll stand up nicely and there's less risk of them, you know, doing that flattening out, <laughs> especially if they're on a very smooth surface. Okay, so which piece is your favourite? Let me know. Is it the big swirl on the left or little bubbles on the right? Thanks for watching the video and listening to me chat. I will be back with my next art video share on Sunday, so if you want some more arty inspiration before then, try these videos and I'll catch up with you soon.